My name is Chris Rourke. In this presentation, I will discuss the main concepts relating to CNET, the catecholaminergic neuron electron transport action selection hypothesis. There is no consensus in neuroscience as to how a specific action is selected. While there are explanations of mechanisms related to action selection, why a person would choose one of two or more actions cannot be explicitly explained, such as when making a selection of a specific item from a buffet, or selecting a specific puzzle piece when assembling a jigsaw puzzle. The CNET mechanism can provide that explanation. This presentation will discuss the basic concepts behind the CNET mechanism. CNET is based on principles of quantum biology related to electron tunneling in proteins which is generally accepted to occur by researchers in that field. Ferritin, an iron storage protein complex, exhibits electron tunneling properties that are different from electron tunneling that usually occurs in proteins and can transfer substantial numbers of electrons over relatively long distances, such as the distances between cell bodies, when it is in a sufficiently ordered combination. Electron tunneling on this scale has been observed in substantia nigra pars compacta or SNC tissue, where there are high concentrations of ferritin. SNC tissue also contains dopamine neurons, which are catecholaminergic neurons. Those dopamine neurons provide signals to the striatum, which generates signals that eventually cause motor neurons that are associated with a specific action to fire, such as to cause an arm to move. As can be seen in this diagram, a neuron has a number of dendrites that receive neurosignals from other neurons that are upstream from the dendrites. These dendrites are connected to the cell body of that neuron, and one axon extends from the cell body to provide a signal to other neurons that are downstream from the axon when the neuron reaches action potential and fires. Most dopamine neurons are small and do not have many synapses. Those small dopamine neurons fire tonically, or like a pacemaker. However, a few percent of the dopamine neurons of the SNC are very large. Those large dopamine neurons are phasic and can fire sporadically in bursts that are associated with action selection. The large dopamine neurons of the SNC have unusually large axons, which form an arbor as shown in this image. These arbors primarily provide signals to the striatum, and one neuron can have over one million synapses in its axonal arbor. That is very large compared to a normal neuron, and it is like being able to fire 1,000 neurons, each with 1,000 synapses, at the same time. These large arbors are well configured to mediate action selection. It has been accepted for some time that the SNC dopamine neurons exhibit what is called predictive reward signaling. That means that they are activated by cortical signals from cognitive processing that identify rewarding events that are better than predicted, they remain uninfluenced by events that are as good as predicted, and they are depressed by events that are worse than predicted. These cortical signals are not received at the dendrites of the dopamine neurons, though. They are received at striatal dendrites, as shown in this figure, where glutamate release from the cortical signals causes dopamine to be released from the dopamine neurons. This is very unusual. The predictive reward signaling researchers have asserted that the phasic dopamine response does not code movement, but predictive reward signaling necessarily occurs after movement has happened, not before. As such, it's not clear that the conclusions that the phasic dopamine response does not code movement was valid based on this earlier predictive reward signaling research. But more recent research has shown that the conclusion is in fact not accurate. In particular, the more recent research has shown that dopamine from these large neurons is temporally and spatially precise and codes action selection. This more recent research looked at the synapses in much greater detail and showed that many of the assumptions about these synapses that were made based on the earlier predictive reward signaling research were also incorrect. This current research thus corrects inaccuracies from the earlier predictive reward signaling research and is also consistent with the earlier predictions made by CNET, which some dismissed as wrong based on the incorrect conclusions from the predictive reward signaling research. 
The predictive reward signaling research appears to be correct about the predictive reward signaling that was being studied, but it also appears to be wrong about action selection, which was not being studied. Because it has been established that these large dopamine neurons code action selection, there must be some mechanism that prevents conflicting coded actions from being selected simultaneously. If multiple large dopamine neurons fire at the same time in response to conflicting cortical signals, that could result in a seizure, such as if one set of cortical signals says to run left and another set of cortical signals says to run right, or if one set says to take a donut from the buffet and another says to take the fruit. CNET provides a mechanism to prevent such conflicting signals from resulting in a seizure by directing energy to the neuron or neurons that are receiving the most stimulation and by having neurons that require that energy in order to reach action potential. The CNET mechanism thus explains how millions of different cortical signals can result in a single action being selected. It allows those millions of signals to be received and processed by a group of neurons in a way that results in the firing of one neuron or a group of very closely related neurons for the selection of an action. Those signals are continuously integrated by the mechanism, which can create what is experienced as a continuous conscious experience. That conscious experience results even when no action is being selected. That is, when signals are being processed but have not reached the level sufficient to cause an action to be selected. There is no other mechanism that has been shown to be able to integrate selective and highly processed neural signals in this manner. For example, electric fields have been proposed for that function, but electric fields would integrate all neural signals and would essentially short circuit the brain so it could not function if they worked like that. Thus, CNET is the first mechanism to be identified that can explain how neural signals can be integrated without destroying the way that the brain functions. Thank you for watching this video. If you have questions or comments, feel free to contact me and I will respond. Additional videos will be prepared to address aspects of CNET that I could not cover in this short presentation.